Assalamu salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, Guys, welcome back to the next lesson of the benefits from Surah Al-Baqarah I believe we have just two more lessons from the first juz after today inshallah Then we're going to move on to the second juz And the second juz is interesting because there's loads of different topics in the second juz There's lots of different topics There's fasting, there's marriage, there's hajj, there's jihad, there's finances there's so much, subhanAllah. Um, and inshallah ta'ala, we're looking forward to the second juice. I think second juice, a, a lot of you guys who probably read Surah Al-Baqarah don't, I mean, you know, we're only able to relate with the stories a lot of the time when we don't study, we don't necessarily know about the gems inside the verses of Ahkam. Sometimes not just the rulings that are in there, but the Imaniyat that are in there. So I'm looking forward to that, inshallah ta'ala. Um, to giving you a taste of that. But today, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go through the story of the cow. So Surah Al-Baqarah gets its name from the story of the Baqarah, the story of the cow. What is the story of the cow? The story of the cow is a story um, between uh, that took place at the time of Musa alayhi salam with his people. And the story has a context. So before I tell you the story, as Allah Azza wa Jal mentions it in the Quran, I have to give you the context. So what transpired was that there was um, a man that was killed. Okay, he was killed by one of his relatives. Um, he was killed by one of his relatives, and he tried to hide and cover up his tracks on him being the one who killed him. So they, when they found the dead body, they disputed amongst themselves who killed this man. So as they're disputing and they're trying to work out who's the murderer, and the murderer's right there, by the way. He's one of his relatives. They say, let's take it to Musa, alayhi salam. He's a prophet of Allah, azza wa jal. Yuha ilayh. Revelation comes to him. Kalimullah, he speaks to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He'll be able to tell us who the culprit is, who killed the man. So they come to Musa, alayhi salam. And they say, Musa. They said, Musa, Tell us, tell us who killed so-and-so. And that's what we pick up from the story in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ When Musa said to his people, they asked, who killed? Who killed the man? Musa said, Allah said in the Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ When Musa said to his people, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرًا Allah He's commanding you that you slaughter a cow. Can I ask you a question? What on earth does a cow have to do with the question? What on earth does slaughtering a cow have to do with the question that Banu Israel asked? They asked, who killed the man? And Musa says, Allah wants you to slaughter a cow. Now, many of you may not be able to understand the link here. But that's irrespective of the point. Allah told you slaughter a cow. So now you have to slaughter a cow. Why Allah? We ask you this. No, why are you asking questions for? You ask the question. This is Allah's response. Whether you see the wisdom in this or not is irrelevant. Whether it's making sense to you right now or not is relevant. If it doesn't make sense to you, that's a deficiency in your intellect. If it doesn't make sense to you, that's a shortcoming on your end. But you ask the question, this is Allah's response. Do as you're commanded. Is that clear? Do you see how many Muslims, they fall into this? Many Muslims today, they, you're, they're told, do this, do this, don't this. They say, why? Why? Are you being serious? You really want me to do this? You really want me to do this? Banu Israel responded in kind. They said, they said, Atatakhiduna huzwa? They say, Are you mocking us? Are you having a laugh? That was the response. They said, Are you joking? Allah say, Musa, they know Mu remember, Allah split the sea for them. Remember, Allah split the sea for them. Allah saved them from Fir'aun. Allah's done all these things for them that we talked about in the previous lesson. They know what Allah has done for them. Now they, and they know Allah speaks to Musa. So Musa is saying, Allah said, slaughter a cow. They say, are you having a laugh? Are you mocking us? Musa, are you being serious? You want us to slaughter a cow? Musa responded, 
أعوذ بالله أن أكون من الجاهلين He said, I seek refuge in Allah from being one of the ignorant ones. Imam Ibn Uthaymin took a fa'idah here. He said, mocking people, ridiculing people, is from ignorance. It's from ignorance. Because they said, are you mocking? And he said, I seek refuge in Allah from being from the ignorant. And also a benefit that we take here is that seeking refuge in Allah is not just from shaitan. It's from many things that you need in your life. You need to seek refuge in Allah from being jahil. You need to seek refuge in Allah from being sick. You need to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from being broke. You need to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from, you know, uh, problems in your marriage. Seeking, if, if a prophet of Allah seeks refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking refuge in Allah from sins. If a prophet of Allah is seeking refuge in Allah azza wa jal from ignorance, then of course we need to as well. Does that make sense? But I want you to focus on their bad manners with the prophet of Allah. And their bad manners with Allah. The prophet of Allah is telling them, do X. And he's saying Allah commanded. They say, are you mocking us? That was their response. <laughs> so when, when, Musa, when Musa said, A'udhu billahi an akuna min al-jahileen, I seek refuge in being from the ignorant ones, they said, okay. They said, qalu, ud'u lana rabbak. They said, qalu, ud'u lana rabbaka yubayyil lana mahi. They say, okay then, make dua to Allah to make clear for us what cow, what cow this is. Look, their bad manners gets even worse. They add to their bad manners. They didn't say, Udu'u Rabbana. They didn't say, Make dua to our Lord. They didn't say, Udu'u Allah. Make dua to Allah. They say, Udu'u Rabbak. They say, Make dua to your Lord. As if to say, that He's not their Lord. As if to say, Ask your Lord. Musa, ask your Lord. And by the way, this is what they were like. You know, Allah told them to go into the city, go into Bayt al Maqdis and fight. They said, Fadhaba anta wa rabbuka faqatila innaha huna qa'idun. They said, you and Allah go and fight. You and your Lord. You and your Lord go and fight. We're going to sit here. We're not going anywhere. You and your Lord go and fight. They would do this. Like, you know when a father gets angry and he says to his wife, tell your daughter, fix up. Tell your son, be quiet. Right? It's like he's freeing himself from the child because of his frustration and his upset and his stubbornness. So look at their kibr, their arrogance. They say, you make dua to your Lord, Musa. You be yillanahi. Clarify to us which cow is it that you want us to slaughter? Pay attention. Did Allah tell them which cow to slaughter? Or did Allah just tell them slaughter a cow? Any cow. P pay attention. Do, how many cows do you think existed at the time? Like that they had access to? Probably like a hundred thousand. Now let's just let's just give it a number. Let's just give it a number. Yeah. Let's just say there's about a hundred thousand cows. Because cows, <laughs> you can go into any country and find about a hundred thousand cows just chilling. You can go through the motorways of the UK. And it's cows for days. Cows for days. Do you understand? So, there's a hundred thousand possible cows in their land that they can go to. You, can have, you could have gone to any one of them. You could have gone to any cow. But you want it to be difficult. You want it to be stubborn. Udu'u rabbaka yubayyil lana mahi. Make dua to your Lord Musa. Which cow does he want us to slaughter? So they try to be difficult. Okay. There's a rule now. Pay attention. There's a rule. Understand there's a rule. Underline it. If you become difficult with Allah, if you try to make things difficult, with, if you try to be stubborn when it comes to Allah, Azzawajal, if you don't accept the guidance when it comes to you, if you don't accept the command first time it comes, Allah's going to make it harder for you next time. And we took this in the first lesson, right? Allah said, They didn't listen the first time. So the second time, Allah will turn their eyes and their heart away. So remember the first time, every time you disobey, every time you say, nah, I'm going to be difficult today, Ya Allah. I'm going to be stubborn and be arrogant with you, Ya Allah. Allah is going to make it harder for you now. So they said, mahi. Which, which cow do you want to slaughter Allah? So, okay. You want to be difficult? Your punishment is Allah is going to make it difficult for you then. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, قَالَ إِنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنَّهَا بَقَرَ إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةٌ لَا فَارِذٌ وَلَا بِكْرٌ عَوَانٌ عَوَانٌ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ it's a, it's a cow It's not old And it's not young It's in the middle So it's not an old cow It's not a young cow It's in the middle So That eliminates Two thirds of cows Right It's not So either you're going to be young Or you're going to be old Or you're going to be In the middle right Either the cow's going to be young Old or middle So For argument's sake Let's just say Because we're just trying to make it easy So we can picture this There was a hundred thousand cows Two thirds of them are now Not the ones You've only got one third so is it, is it harder now? Is it more dakiq? Is it more precise? Is it more tightened for them? It is, right? They could have stopped. They could have found any cow. They could have found any cow that's in the middle. 
قال <laughs> what did they say قالوا ادعوا ربك موسى go ask your lord again go make dua to your lord again يبين لنا ما لونها what color what's the color of this cow you telling me you want a middle aged cow okay what color you get cows that are brown and black and white and black and white and you get different cows which cow do you want to slaughter قال انه يقول انها بقره صفراء it's a yellow cow it's a le- you want you want to be difficult okay go find a yellow cow now have you, have you ever seen a yellow cow before Allah alam if it exists in our day and age but you know but definitely it seems from the context of the verse that it was rare it was not something easy right did Allah just say yellow cow a yellow cow would have been hard enough to come along right a yellow cow would have been hard enough to come along am I lying Allah didn't say yellow cow Allah said baqaratun safra a yellow cow faqi'un it is a bright yellow cow a bright yellow cow Is that hard now? Is that is that harder now? Because imagine you find a, a brown cow. How hard is it to find a bright brown cow? Then Allah said, "Faqi'ul lawnuha tasurru nadirin." It can't just be bright and yellow. It has to be bright and yellow. When you look at it, it makes you feel happy. It has to be a pleasant color to look at. Now, as in looking at this cow, is just a joy. Ah, what a beautiful yellow cow. So look how hard Allah made it for them. Yellow cow, that's bright. And it has to be good to look at. By the way, scholars took a benefit from this. They took a benefit that when you're, when you're depressed, the color yellow helps you. Because Allah said, Safra faqi'ul lawnuha tasurru nadhirin. Nadhirin. It's yellow color makes you happy when you look at it. Yeah, sunny days. Have you not seen that even when they want to have a smiley face, it's yellow. And Mr. Men from the Mr. Men books, Mr. Happy was yellow. Remember? And angry is red. And depression, sadness is like blue and purple. Right? Right. So so yellow is a is a is a color for happiness. And they worked it out through psychology and this, that now, but Allah has told you in the Quran. He indicated rather to it in the Quran. So Allah gave them three. First, Allah told them what? It can't be middle, it has to be middle age. Now Allah told him yellow, bright yellow, has to be pleasant to look at. Now look at them, look what they said. يُبَيِّلْ لَنَا مَا هِيَ إِنَّ الْبَقَرَةَ تَشَابَ عَلَيْنَا They said, Musa, make dua to your Lord again. Not our Lord. Look, they did not say our Lord. Make dua to your Lord. Look at the disobedience. Look at the bad manners of Allah. Make dua to your Lord again. Make dua to Him. يُبَيِّلْ لَنَا مَا هِيَ إِنَّ الْبَقَرَةَ تَشَابَ عَلَيْنَا Which cow is it? They look the same to us. Wallahi, look at the way they're mocking it. Allah is told them such a specific cow description. A middle-aged cow. That's yellow. Bright. Good to look at. And they say, they all look the same. As if to say, we've got bare yellow cows. We've got bare middle-aged yellow cows. We've got loads of them. Does that make sense? They say, inshallah la muhtadun. Then inshallah will be guided. So Allah said, look, قال إنه يقول بقرة ذلول بقرة لا بقرة عفوا لا ذلول تثير الأرض ولا تسقي الحرث it's a cow that neither plows the earth nor does it water the earth the cow the cows are used for plowing the earth for tilling the earth so it's not used for tilling the earth nor for watering the earth nor for irrigating the earth so look at this لا ذلول تثير الأرض ولا تسقي الحرث مسلمة it has to be free from any deficiencies لا شيء فيها and it can't have any other color that mixes with it because you know when you see a cow it's not all brown it's got it's got bits of yellow bits of black if it's a br- yeah, white cow it's got bits of brown bits of black bits of yellow does that make sense so Allah سبحانه وتعالى said لا ذلول it can't be one that's used for the earth to plow the earth. ولا تسقي الحرث. It can't be used to water the earth. 
مسلمة it has to be free من ال من العيوب safe from any deficiencies it can't have a cut ear or a broken leg no free لا شيء تفيها it can't have any other color it has to be pure yellow pure yellow أدق even more precise even harder for them now is do do you see how they made it harder with Allah they tried to be hard they tried to be difficult so Allah made it harder on them the lesson here brothers and sisters many lessons don't be arrogant with Allah submit to the command even if it doesn't make sense to you because still till now we've not understood why has why has Allah told them to slaughter a cow they asked for who murdered the man but now the conversation seems to have gone off murder a cow oh, sorry sorry slaughter a cow slaughter a cow but why ya Allah what's the connection here what's the relationship here What's the relationship here? Hear and obey. And you would have found out long time ago. But you tried to make it hard on yourself. So now you're on a cow hunt. Look what they said. They said, when Allah gave them that extra precise description, they said, Musa, now you have come with the truth. Pay attention. This is them implying, Musa, before what you were doing was batil. What you were saying before was batil. Before we thought you were joking. Before you were mocking us, Musa. Before that was a joke, Musa. Musa, you were mocking us before. Al-an, now. Now you're serious. Barakallah feet, Musa. So now we know what you want. Before when you told us kill a cow, any cow, middle-aged cow, yellow cow, you were mocking us, Musa. You were joking, Musa. You were, fought, you were bombarded, Musa. Now, Musa, now you've made it hard for us. Al-an, look at the bad manners. From beginning, Allah said, that Musa said, Musa, messenger of Allah, saying, Allah told you, Surah Rakao. They said, what? This is mocking us. They say, now, 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 you're being serious. So, فَذَبَحُوهَا They found the cow. By the way, there are many stories mentioned about how they found a cow, where they looked, they couldn't find it, they found it with the boy, then they, you know, the boy sold it to them for the weight of the cow in gold. And, you know, some say that it was because he was righteous to his mom and whatnot. These are not authentic stories from the Prophet ﷺ. Rather, they are from the Isra'iliyat. So I'm not going to mention them. And we're sticking to what the Qur'an says. So they struggled. They really struggled to find the cow. They, yeah, they only found it. Just they only found one. They only found this one cow. فَذَبَحُوهَا They sorted it. وَمَا كَادُوا يَفْعَلُونَ Pay attention. They did it hesitantly. They almost didn't want to slaughter it. They didn't really want to slaughter it. They almost didn't do it. Some scholars said they, this is because they almost didn't find it. Because of how, so, how, how hard it was to find it. Others said it was because of their arrogance and their obstinance. Pay attention. Why did Allah tell them slaughter a cow and not slaughter a goat and not slaughter a chicken and not slaughter a camel? Whoever tells me the answer is going to get a book. Whoever tells me the answer is going to get a book. I got an Arabic book up for grabs and I got an English book up for grabs. Why did Allah tell him slaughter a camel? Uh, sorry, a cow. And not a camel. And not a chicken. And not a goat. But a cow. Do you know? Who knows? Nope, 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 nope. 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 Yes, because Allah can do it with once, of course. But nope, that's not what I'm looking for. When I tell you, you guys are going to be like, okay, no, okay, uh, one second. So now I'm going to answer the question, inshallah. You guys are going to get me a book. Oh, wait, wait, someone answered it, someone answered it, someone answered it, someone answered it. Hamsa, Hamse, Hamse, I hope I pronounced it right. Hamse Dean said, because they worshipped the cow. Because they worshipped the cow. They took an ijal, a calf, right? And they worshipped it. So scholars said, to get that love and that because they still you know you know when you worship a cow you have that love that that uruhiya for it so Allah Azza wa Jal wanted to completely rid anything in their heart towards the cow that they might still have you know when you worship something it's just in your heart that thing that you, you know that worship that veneration that 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 you had for it that love that humility you had for it so you're going to slaughter the thing that you worshipped 
to show that it's not deserving and worthy to be worshipped. How can you worship something that you're about to slaughter now? How can you worship something that you're about to slaughter now? Hamza, you want an English book or an Arabic book? English. Okay, I'm going to send you uh, one, of the, one of the books, inshallah, in the back. Please email at session at gmail.com with your details, your address, everything, and inshallah, we'll send you the book, okay? I'm going to send you uh, Ibn al-Qayyim book or something like that, inshallah. Translation of one of his books. Okay, carry on. So, فَذَبَحُوهَا دِسْرُوِرِ وَمَا كَادُوا يَفْعَلُونَ وَإِذْ قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا فَدَّارَأْتُمْ فِيهَا Now, Allah says, remember, وَإِذْ قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا Remember, the, 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 then I will go back to the story about the person who was killed. فَدَّارَأْتُمْ فِيهَا You disputed yourself. Who killed him? This is the question, right? You slaughtered the cow now, right? Okay, now it's going to make sense to you why Allah told you to slaughter a cow. Now we get to the point. You wanted to know who killed the man. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَقُلْ نَضْرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا Take a piece of the cow that was slaughtered and smack it on the dead body. فَقُلْ نَضْرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا Take a piece of the cow that you, that you just slaughtered. And by the way, Allah didn't tell you if it was the leg of the cow, the shin of the cow, the arm of the cow, the nose of the cow, the rib of the cow. These are all things that are pointless for me and you try to work out because Allah didn't mention it to us. If it was relevant, he would have told us. Does that make sense? كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى The dead man came back to life. The dead man came back to life and he said, this man here, he's the one who killed me. And then he went back and he died. Allah said, كَذَلِكَ يُرِيهُمُ اللَّهُ عَفْوًا كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ Like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he shows you his ayat, his signs. So, pay attention. Allah Azza wa Jal told them to slaughter the cow what Allah was going to tell them to do was, okay, take a bit of the cow, smack it against the dead body of the man who's dead. He's going to come back to life and tell you who killed him. Simple. The job's done. Right? The job's done. The job's done. Okay, the job's done. But they made it hard on themselves. They made it hard on themselves. And the lesson that we take from this is, <coughs> the lesson that we take from this, brothers and sisters, is that when Allah is going to command you something, do it. Give in straight away. Don't ask no questions. Don't play no games. Okay, now it became harder for them because they, the cow that they had to find was going to be harder. But Allah can make your deen harder for you. As in, your heart can get flipped upside down. Okay, if I have a cup and I turn the cup upside down, I can pour however much water I want. It will never gather water. If your heart gets flipped upside down, you can pour as much guidance into your heart as possible. You can read as much and listen to as many lectures, but it will not gather the guidance because your heart has been flipped upside down. And when you disobey Allah and you re reject the guidance, it, make, it becomes harder for you to accept it the next time. That's the moral of the story. Don't have bad manners with Allah. Don't have bad manners with the Prophet The way you have bad manners with the messengers of Allah and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that when you're given a command you reject it and you be difficult you make it long to submit just submit submit that's your job give in does that make sense and give in straight away the longer you take to give in it's gonna be hard you're only gonna make it longer for yourself any guy or girl who longed out submitting to Allah whether it be the issue of hijab I, I, let me give an example right Allah told you don't free mix so look at how much you long your life out you find a girl she breaks your heart you find another girl she breaks your heart this one, you get her pregnant. Now, what do you do? You end up killing the baby by aborting. Look at how many sins that you've done. At the end of it, when you come back, you're making toba for murder. You're making toba for zina upon zina upon zina. You're making toba for, you, you, you're overcoming trauma and trust issues because she cheated on you in the past and this and that and how much exactly time you wasted. You're making toba for so much more. Look at how much, how, how hard it was for you to come back. As opposed to when it was just the first girl. And we said to you, Akhifah Allah, break up with your girlfriend, man. She's haram for you, bro. You're going to marry her? Okay, wait. Are you going to marry her right now? Are you going to go to her dad right now? Are you going to cut off with her contact and speak to her dad and marry her right now? No, then don't stop, stop being long, bro. Make to Allah, to Allah Azza wa Jal and find and connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and eventually Allah Azza wa Jal will bring you a spouse for you. But you know, you make it long for yourself. Same way with the guys in the streets. They say, listen, bro, I just need to make a quick money, sell some weed and I'll be back. Just want to pay the bills, bro. But what does he do in that process? From weed, he starts selling crack, starts selling cocaine, getting into beef, stabs a guy. The guy comes back, takes revenge, stabs him. Now they come, they kill a couple men. Boom, next thing you know, jail. 10 years, 20 years. He makes Toba in jail. Alhamdulillah, at least he comes back. But look how long it took, bro. Look how long it took. Just give in. Just give in. 
just give in subhanak allahumma bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum guys i got some bird food here and i'm about to feed the ducks but you know one thing i was just observing as i was feeding them is that they have no idea whether this is poison or not and they don't even care you know why because they're animals they don't have intelligence they don't have a mind to be able to function and work out what's right and what's wrong you don't run away come here why are you running away See, look, now I'm actually giving him food, he's running away, he's not using his mind. <laughs> it reminds you of the thing our parents would teach us when we were young. They would say to us, what? They would say, don't ever take candy from a stranger. Don't take candy from a stranger because a stranger could do some harm. And this got me to think about one of the primary differences between the human beings and the animals. You no know, Allah he gave us something that he didn't give to them. He gave us an aql, he gave us a, a rationale, an intelligence, an ability to be able to learn and work out what's right and wrong. Whereas the animals weren't given that. Their driving force that drives them is just their desire. So they eat what they want, they drink what they want, they sleep where they will, and they'll even pass wind or excrete or urinate, wherever it might be. People may be watching them and they have no care. You know why? Because it's all about their desires. Whatever they want to do, they will do. What's sad and shocking is that there are human beings alive today who despite being given the gift of intelligence, common sense, aql, they are behaving like the animals. Our brothers and our sisters, they kill like the animals kill each other. They drink whatever they want to drink like the animals drink. They sleep and fornicate with whoever the way that the animals would fornicate and copulate with whoever. They don't give a damn. My brothers and sisters, today I want to wake you up and I want you to embrace this human gift that Allah has given you and I, the gift of aql. Learn. Use it. And what's the primary thing that you can use your aql in? You need to use your intellect to protect you from the greatest harm, which is the harm of the hellfire. And how would one use his intellect to save him from the hellfire and to enter him into paradise? He would do so by learning tawheed. He would learn how to worship Allah. Who is Allah? His names, his attributes. How to worship him. Salah, zakat, hajj, fasting. You and I were put on this earth to worship Allah alone. We cannot worship him without learning these things. But it wouldn't be fair of me to give you this message and not leave you with a possible alternative. You see, we have an online Islamic studies institute called the Knowledge College. And we are about to start our most effective Islamic studies program in January, inshallah. It's a one year program where you study with us online for four days a week, each day just one hour. We learn various different sciences and you walk away knowing the basics of your deen. We call it the Muslim Survival Guide to help you survive in this life and the next. All you have to do is click the link below inshallah ta'ala and inshallah ta'ala you'll be with us, one of our students, with us live for 38 weeks in a year inshallah and we will learn how to protect ourselves from the ultimate harm which is the harm of the hellfire. With that said, assalamu alaikum, peace, click the link below and hopefully I'll see you on the other side.